Michael, Cabaret is a musical that I'm finding most theater artists have a very um, unique relationship with. What's your connection to Cabaret? It's really impossible for me to separate Cabaret, the musical, from my experience of growing up during um, the AIDS crisis. And, you know, the parallels are are shocking. Um, according to my research, some 90,000 homosexuals were arrested in Germany between 1937 and 1939. 5,000 to 15,000 of them were imprisoned in concentration camps. And there's no true record of how many of those people died, um, but some estimate up to 60%. Uh, and, you know, in the 1980s, over 100,000 people died of AIDS. I'm a queer artist. I had to figure out how to come out in the, the late 80s and the early 90s. Um, and I find that I feel that I have a lot of parallels with Cliff, um, one of the, ma the main characters in uh, Cabaret, because like Cliff, uh, I have the, or had the ability to pass, right? As a straight white man, if I wanted to do so. And I'm just aware of the enormous privilege and the enormous responsibility that uh, that comes along with that. Cabaret has a very memorable aesthetic for most of us. How do you evoke that feeling, that style, while remaining to, truthful to your impulses as an artist? There are two very memorable designs associated with Cabaret. Audiences today may be most familiar with Robert Brill's set design from the 1998 revival. And there are some vestiges of that design that find their way into my design, particularly the sort of red and black color palette. But before Robert Brill, of course, there was Boris Aronson, the great Boris Aronson, who designed the original 1967 production. And in that design, very memorably, um, when the audience walked into the theater, they were faced with a mirror that reflected their image back to themselves as they sat in the house, um, sort of a distorted uh, mirror um, that was the first image of the show. And there are bits and bits of mirror all over the set design, all over my set design, which is a definite tribute um, to Boris Aronson. One of the physical challenges of Cabaret is that the musical essentially moves back and forth between two locations in Berlin, the Kit Kat Club and Fräulein Schneider's boarding house. How do you navigate those two physical spaces? So the way that I negotiate between um, the Kit Kat Club and what I'm just gonna sort of characterize as the book scenes, right? They take place in various locations in Fräulein Schneider's apartment. We also go to some other locations like the fruit shop, a train compartment. James, the director, and I have purposefully blurred the lines between the reality of the book scenes and the reality of those locations and the Kit Kat Club itself. So if you will, the book scenes even take place on the stage of the Kit Kat Club. So how do you make it your own? How do you make this cabaret your own? I try very hard to read the play as if it is a brand new piece of theater without any production history behind it. This is easier said than done. Most musicals are based on some sort of source material. That is definitely true with cabaret. Um, it goes back to uh, Christopher Isherwood's novel, uh, Berlin Stories, right, from 1939. But maybe even more closely related to the musical is uh, John Van Druten's um, adaption, which was a play version from 1951, I believe, um, which was called I Am a Camera. Uh, so I go back to the source material as a way to try to reconnect with where the, uh, where the playwrights were coming from um, and to see if I can build a design um, that feels like a production that is brand new for the audience. Cabaret!